Our seventh school feature today is the Lindenwood Lions. In their first year as GLBC members, the Lions won the 2019 crown with a perfect 7-0 mark, going 9-4 overall. Lindenwood opted out of the spring season and hasn't faced an opponent since November 30th, 2019. In the second round of G, uh, in the second round of GLVC action, Jed Stugard enters his fifth season at Lindenwood and joins us for his first kickoff after being unable to attend the 2019 event. He is joined by a pair of team, team captains, quarterback Kate Brister, back for a second kickoff, and senior linebacker Drew Sears. Coach, speak to the excitement you get as you uh, get back on the gridiron for the first time in over 500 days. Well, you know, everything has been fairly kind of normal except the games. You know, I said so a lot of, yes, uh, to, to not play 11 games last year uh, in regular season uh, was was not fun at all. But I think as far as the, the practices and fall practice and spring practice and our weight room and our, our off-season conditioning program and strength program, that's all been fairly, so it's not super new, but the obvious thing is these, we haven't played a football game in basically two years. And so um, it has been weird. But, uh, but I know uh, um, we've done so much prep. And even, even in the spring when we were doing like spring ball, that felt very normal. So, um, but I think everybody's itching to actually go play against somebody else. And, and, uh, and we knew that was a, a tough decision in the spring because, you know, you're missing out on that opportunity to do that. But, uh, you know, we, we, we feel like it was the best decision for our program. Thank you, Coach. From an offensive standpoint, seven starters are back, including the All-American sitting next to you. In addition to Cade, you have three other first-team All-GLVC honorees back from a fantastic 2019 squad. Give us your assessment on what the expectations are from the Lions offense this year. Well, you know, I guess, uh, you know, we're, I always say we're cautiously optimistic, you know, when you kind of feel like uh, you have that much uh, experience back and you're, you know, I think your team, whether people believe it or not, you're, a lot of times your team kind of hinges on who, who's uh, the signal caller back there. And so have Cade come back as a veteran now of, of a couple of years and his leadership on the offensive side is huge. We had, we had some key, couple key uh, guys we lost in graduation, but um, we have a lot of returners, like you said. So our expectations are, uh, it's funny, we don't really probably build our program on expectations. We always talk about uh, every day going out and, and giving the best that you can give and let the chips fall where they may. So, you know, that's the same approach that we take going into this year. You know, we don't look at, preseason polls and where we think we should be because I think every team in America has got a goal to go win a national championship. I don't think people have to. That's what everybody says, right? So it's really all about the, the next opportunity to get better, and that's kind of what we always preach. Cade, you had a great 2019 season, a lot of accolades individually, including GLBC Offensive Player of the Year, honorable mention All-America by D2Football.com. You also led the team uh, to the GLVC conference title and a bid to the NCAA playoffs. But as we alluded to, you haven't faced anyone other than your teammates since November of 2019. Tell us how you will transition from a lengthy hiatus and what have you been doing to keep yourself prepared? Uh, so basically what we've been doing, we treat it just like another uh, red shirt year, which has been fantastic for a lot of our guys. Um, I know uh, most of our guys, our bodies are feeling, you know, better than ever and healthy. And, uh, you know, that year off gave us another year with Coach Hull, our strength coach, as he has talked about, um, basically to train and keep lifting and getting ready for it. Um, you know, it's, it's obvious that we haven't played, um, you know, a real game since uh, November 30th of 2019, like you said. But we've been doing a ton of stuff uh, through spring ball, and our coaches have done a great job of putting us in game-like scenarios. And, you know, that first game will be, you know, a good test for us to get ready. And um, Angela State's a great football team that we're going to have to be ready for. So just settling in that first quarter and getting our legs back under us will be key. Thank you. Coach, set, uh, seven starters return on the defensive side of the ball, which includes uh, other All-American you brought with you today, along with two more All-GLVC first-teamers. All of those honorees are upperclassmen as well. How does the decorated experience mold the unit as you head into the fall? 
Well, the leadership's key, you know, and I think the fact that we have led by Drew, um, he's been an exceptional leader. There's got Lloyd Lockett, who's not here today, another exceptional leader on defense that you don't hear his name a lot, just be, but behind the scenes, an incredible leader. And that, I can just keep naming guys. I think that's what brings me a lot of, uh, you know, we, I think defensively they know we got to be more consistent on defense, but they rose to the occasion when they needed to. And I think, um, you know, we did, we learned a lot about that campaign in 19, but uh, uh, we, we were a team that, hey, when they need to make a play defensively, they did. And I think their goals and, and our goals defensively this year is just to be even more consistent defensively. But anytime you kind of have that kind of experience coming back, but the key is the character and the leadership that you're coming back. It makes you feel, you know, pretty good about uh, where we think we can be defensively. Drew, in addition to your All-American honors by four different organizations, you were the GLBC 2019 Defensive Player of the Year. Now, as you head into your senior season, how have you been leading the team over the past, uh, last 22 months or so since you last competed? And what's the mindset across the board as you prepare to get back on the field? Uh, I think our big thing is just focusing on day by day. And Coach Stu talks about that. It's just it's the process. And, um, you know, you can get wrapped up in the fact that we didn't play last year and it's been a long time since we played a game. But you focus on day by day and then the, the process takes care of itself. And um, I think everybody's been counting down the days to till our first game and it makes people even more hungry. But I mean, and it came faster than a lot of people realized. But I think we've grown tremendously, especially in leadership in this off season. And guys stepped up that you didn't even think would step up. And I think our, our leadership and our depth and just kind of, we've grown tremendously over COVID. So we're very confident going into the season and we're real excited. Coach, no starters uh, are noted on the returning list for special teams this year. Give us your thoughts on the unit and what you're expecting for those who will step up this year. Well, yeah, it's, um, you know, we, we have, uh, um, so actually, I think probably since that release, you know, we were, uh, we're, we're having uh, Jared Strangler, who was our punter last year, um, actually, um, because of COVID and, you know, thought maybe he was going to be done, um, you know, so he'll, he actually will be coming back uh, uh, for us. But, you know, we've, we've you know, I think in, like any position or anything, we, we're, we're really excited about where we're at with our, uh, with our incoming freshman uh, class in, in the, in the uh, kicking game a little bit, um, you know, and, and uh, it, you never know with freshmen and things like that coming in to compete, but I, I know we're pretty optimistic about where we're at in the kicking game. Having Jared coming back, we have probably one of the best uh, long snappers in Reed Williams that uh, he should be a returning starter. That's probably my error that we didn't have him as a returning <laughs> starter. Sorry, Reed. I'm giving you a shout out right now because, you know, you look at specialists, you're, you're uh, you only know the long snapper usually when they cost you the game by snapping one over the punter's head. And, and Reed's so consistent and awesome, you know, to have him back is, is a huge deal too. So, um, yeah, we feel it's an area that we, we needed to improve on in some areas anyway. Um, and uh, having Jared come back to kind of recompete for that position gives us some uh, gives us some comfort as well. As you head into the season, a pair of home and away non-conference games, but more than half of your seven conference games are on the road. Give us your uh, take on the schedule and how you're preparing your team to get back into the swing of things. Yeah, so, you know, I kind of, I think your team's character and, and uh, adversity, uh, all those things, uh, I think road games and things like that shouldn't really be a factor. I think uh, football is football. We don't really make too much of road games and stuff because you, you got to win. Uh, you got to win to go to the playoffs. And I think, uh, I think we did really well actually competing on the road last year. Now, our, our schedule is tougher this year going on the road. Um, and, uh, um, but I think, you know, to, to get to where we want to go, um, you know, I know that we've got to, we've got to, uh, that can't be a factor where, you know, you don't go play great on the road. Um, Cause you're probably going to have to do it in the playoffs at some point. If you want to be a playoff team, you need to learn to be road warriors. So, so we actually kind of enjoy road games, uh, our, the trip, the Friday nights in the hotel, all those things. They kind of end up being team building uh, great experiences, and uh, I think it's been a positive for us. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on GLVCSN today.